Hey everybody, we're back. This is Stephen Moore, also known as Uncle Phantasmo. Um, we're going to continue working on this trebuchet, and I'm going to show you how I built the hinge that goes between the bucket and the arm. Uh, we're in the second uh, component that we're going to be putting into this design, um, following the bucket which we did in the last video. Uh, so we're going to start by actually sketching out what the hinge looks like. Um, and I'm going to do it on this plane again. And I need to be able to reference the sketch uh, in order to get the center point for this circle to start my next circle. So I'm going to turn on that sketch. And now I can actually select it. I'm hitting C to go to the circle, center diameter circle. And I'm going to put that in place. Now I'm going to run into a little bit of trouble whenever I create another circle above it. So I'm actually going to create a line going from the center and then having it go straight up. And that will give me a point of reference uh, later. And I'm going to select it, right click it, and choose normal construction. And that allows me to um, have a completely vertical uh, positioning for my second circle even though it doesn't lie um, on the grid until I zoom in. And I can zoom in, but sometimes it's just a lot easier to uh, to make sure that it's completely um, in line. So create another circle. I might keep this one at 15. Also, uh, because I'm going to make pins that go between everything, and I want to be able to reuse those same pins on every element. And that, if you don't understand that now, uh, I will show you in a later tutorial or a later video in this same series. So I'm going to create the second circle, actually third circle that's going to go on outside our top circle and make it 25. I'm going to create another circle down here. I'm going to actually make it larger because I feel like it just makes a more interesting shape. Um, then I'm hitting L or uh, you can go to sketch and do line or click the by default the button that it gives you. And then what I want to do is I want to take a line directly off of this circle and attach it to this one, but I want it to follow the contour so that it doesn't um, create a jagged edge. Uh, so the way to do that is get your mouse over the circle and then hold down left click and it'll pull off a tangential line. And you can snap it onto the other circle too. And the reason, the way that you know you've gotten tangential lines is you'll see this little icon. Um, actually, I'll zoom in. It'll create a little icon like a circle with a line off of it. And that means you got a tangential line. We'll do it again on this side. I'll zoom out more and more. All right, so I got to reset my my camera to include both lines, I guess. So I'm going to delete that. Create a line, tangential, and snap it into place. Go to sketch, trim it, get rid of these extra um, unnecessary my, uh, yeah, unnecessary lines so that I can keep my sketch as clean as possible. If I really want to, I can also get rid of the um, construction line, but sometimes it's nice later on to have those kind of things in place. So I am just going to uh, hit Control Z until they come back. And it looks like I'm referencing the body underneath, so I'm going to get rid of it again uh, this way. Now, I'm not sure what's going on here, why it's creating that. I think it's maybe, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just showing me the diameter is in that direction. Um, uh, for it, maybe if I, yeah, I can just drag it off. So I'm not going to worry about that because it's not directly affecting what I'm ha having to do. All right, I'm setting it at five millimeters. Um, and it hit it, but it is still there. Here it is. And now it's located in the center. And I actually don't want just, I want to actually have two of these um, in my design. Uh, and so 
I could do a couple of things. I could move it and then, like I did with the last one, and then um, duplicate it or mirror it. But this time I'm going to show you something a little bit different. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click the wrong button. Let's try that again. Go back to model and go to um, pattern. And we're going to use a rectangular pattern this time. I'm going to select pattern bodies. And then my direction will be on the red. Let's try and select the object again. There we go. And I actually want a quantity. I want two, but I'm going to need um, three in order to get this to work properly. So I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to change my perspective so that I can uh, get the distance I want. And instead of doing one direction, I'm going to do symmetric. And then um, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to leave it at pattern bodies. Uh, since they're not intersecting anything, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and you can see right now the I've, I've I can see now that I've made a mistake that I need to correct. Uh, I'm actually going to go back to my um, I'm going to cancel this and roll back to my push pull. And what I should have done when I do my push pull is instead of doing one side, done symmetric, and then done five millimeters. And that creates it really thick, twice as thick as I need. So I'm actually going to do 5 divided by 2. Or you could do the math um, in your head and be 2.5 millimeters. But that'll center it. And that way, whenever I go back and do a pattern, rectangular pattern, um, and I select the body that I'm trying to do and the direction, again, on the red. And then I'm going to drag it out and choose symmetric. Now I have them in equidistance uh, in my design. I'm going to hit, I'm just going to double check that these are doing what I want them to do. Yeah. And then because I don't want this center one, I'm actually just going to hover over it and see that it's body seven and just hide it because um, I don't need it. and. Uh, that is an easy way to get uh, to. It does leave you with the um, extra body, I think. Well, let's just try it. We'll hit delete. Yeah, it destroys it because these other ones are dependent on uh, seven existing. Uh, and I haven't found a way to totally break them from that dependency. But that's just uh, one way to do it. Uh, and that's just one way that I found that you may or may not love, but it is something that can work for you. So in our next um, video, I'm going to show you guys how I built the arm for the trebuchet. Uh, you'll see that in this um, image, it actually has a very, um, it's not simply a cylinder stretch across. It's actually going to have a couple of different um, shapes in it in order to do it. And I'll show you how I built those. So I'll see you in the next video.